all the dross that films based on games have produced, and all the theories about why they fall short, only one mystery remains. Why have there been so many attempts at fighting game adaptations? I mean, they're hardly the height of video game storytelling, which they don't need to be. We play them because we want to see buff Hitler fights Indian Stretch Armstrong, or Mario against Link or something. Any attempt at story or lore is usually just there to make sure the cast are assembled in such a way that it makes sense for them to pair off and kick the living souls out of each other. It's not like the film industry is reflecting popularity when it tries again and again to make fighting games work as film either. It just boggles the mind. Oh well, it's a shame we only got the one dead or alive film, eh? The practical upshot of all this is that if one's looking for a film recounting the epic and intricate story told by the Tekken saga of games, then there's four choices that get thrown your way. I'm going to deal with the first to surface, mostly because when I saw it advertised in an old PlayStation magazine years ago, with pictures of Tekken characters and dinosaurs, my young mind flipped out. A quick overview of the relevant details of Tekken's story, because whilst the film isn't canon in itself, it stays surprisingly true to most of the characters. The series ultimately hinges around Hihachi Mishima, a thoroughly unpleasant head of a global megacorporation with fantastically aerodynamic hair. Through his company, he organises a yearly tournament to find the greatest fighter in the world, as well as try and draw out his considerable number of enemies, including his son Kazuya, who he threw over a cliff as a child, presumably because his hair wasn't quite as cool. First problem with the film unfolds itself almost immediately with a perplexingly obtuse pseudo-philosophical speech from a random narrator. Now, I'm not sure if this is poorly translated or if it's just pretentious as hell, but it certainly seems like the latter, as the narrator doesn't appear anywhere else in the film and just feels out of place. This wouldn't be so much of an issue if the pretentiousness was just contained to the intro, but various characters will even vomit out observations on the nature of life at seemingly arbitrary points, making even less sense than The Matrix's architect. Oh well. For the film specifically, the plot mostly follows June Kazama's story of going through the tournament. In the film, she's an Interpol agent with a past obsession with Kazuya, who receives an invitation to participate in the tournament and an assignment from her superiors to investigate the Mishima Zaibatsu. At the risk of repeating myself, the filmmakers do do a decent job of very nearly getting every character's personality and backstory perfectly in line with how it's told in the games. A great example of what I'm talking about here is the film's treatment of Lei Wulong. Being a fairly major side character in the film, he's friendly, check, he's a member of the Hong Kong police, got a sense of humour, but dear god, he's he basically looks nothing like his original depiction. Maybe it's just me. I guess small inconsistencies could distract fans of the series from the monotonous dialogue delivery, awful soundtrack and choppy animation. What viewers, especially fans of the games, won't be able to ignore, however, is the fact that there's barely any fight scenes and those that there are don't, for the most part, show characters executing moves from the games. Which is baffling because, as I said, almost no one will be coming to the film looking for a good story well told. Yeah, I'm convinced that there is a great story that could be told with this setup of characters and stories to pull from, but no one's realistically expecting that to be a priority. The games have an absolutely gigantic cast the films could pull from, and to its credit, the film does try and cover a large number of stories, but it can make the film feel schizophrenic at times, and, and there's also the unfortunate consequence that a lot of popular characters are relegated to background cameo roles. I think because of the global mega corporations, the assassins, and attempted filicide, the filmmakers must have panicked and thought they needed a higher age rating for the film or something, because there's also nigh out of place fountains of blood. May I remind you, this is a film with big goofy dinosaur monsters in it, and a boxing kangaroo. Despite the fact that the film is mercifully only just under an hour long, it still has the temerity to call itself the motion picture, so I don't think it's unfair to judge it as such. The movie is a tonal mess, bouncing between philosophy, poorly choreographed action, and unintentional comedy. I can't recommend it for anyone but the most die-hard of Tekken fans. I won't pay, I won't pay, yeah.